I'm going to show you exactly how I made this fully 3D dynamic text animation in After Effects. I'll cover how I set up the 3D text using the Cinema 4D renderer so that I can still use After Effects layer styles without compromise, and how I made a nice fluid text animation before sharing how I created all the extra jazz to really bring it to life. I'll be honest, for this one I really had no storyboard or illustrator work prior. It was just kind of inspired from things I saw on Instagram, and in particular probably the work of Matt Voice, who I highly recommend for typo animations. I first started off by creating some text in a comp, making it 3D, and then changing the renderer to the Cinema 4D renderer. This opens up a few more options for our text, including the one that I was after being the geometry options, which allows us to add extrusion depth to our layer. This does however come at the cost of not being able to use things like layer styles and track mats in our comp, but there is a workaround for that which I'll come to shortly. I did start by trying to animate this with a range selector, but I just couldn't get the fluidity that I really wanted, which is probably more of a skill issue than an after effects issue. So I ended up splitting them out into individual layers and manually positioning them using the full word as my alignment template. This gave me a lot of the control that I initially wanted to really create that movement that I had in mind. As always, I like to block my animations out, and this was no different. I first created a more linear blocked animation, just animating the Z depth, so I knew how far I wanted these to move before offsetting them all to make them feel a little extra. I then probably spent a good hour or two just tweaking my curves and my movement for this as it's something that's always a huge focus for me in my work. I always feel as though the timing and easing of any project can really make a difference to the overall look. I then needed to prepare the comp for using layer styles. To do this we will need to recolor them in a parent composition and to do this we will need to key out certain parts of our text in order to be able to recolor them easily. So we need to open up our text layers, click the animate button, go down to front, colour and click RGB. This allows us to set our front face as a different colour to the rest of our text. I set mine to bright red. I then repeated this for the side and back faces too, setting these to a bright green and a bright blue. I then pre-comped all these layers and wanted three dupes, one for the front face, one for the side face and one for the back face. To each of these I added a colour key effect just to key out the parts I don't want and this will either leave me with the face or the side I need to colour each one individually. While I am trying to create more personal projects to work on my own skills and hopefully teach you guys something along the way, I've really been wanting to improve my core design skills and in particular my use of colour. Although I already had some knowledge of colour from from my years of experience, I'd never really focused on why things worked and using actual design theory to correctly apply colour to my work. This class on Skillshare really helped me to fill those gaps in my knowledge, teaching me about the emotions and meanings of certain colours, creating my own cohesive colour palettes and exactly how to use them. And all of this has helped me with the creation and design of this project that I'm breaking down today. If you're wanting to learn more about design yourself, colour theory, get inspired by colour is one of many classes that can be found over on Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, with thousands of classes led by industry professionals across animation, illustration, design, freelance, productivity and way more. This year, why not invest in yourself and your goals by starting a learning journey on Skillshare to really take your skills to the next level. To help give you a head start, the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. With Skillshare offering so much incredible value, you really don't want to miss out. And a massive thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So now because we're back in a normal 2D composition, I can now use layer styles to color up my layers. To the front, I added a gradient overlay, inner glow and inner shadow, before adding a black stroke to more suit the art style that I wanted. I did need to animate this due to the size of the text moving backwards and forwards in their own 3D space, but it really helped to sell the illusion of depth. I did want to have the same effect on both the front and back faces, so in the end I only had a front and back and a side layer colour keyed. For the side layer I added a fill with an orange inner shadow and an inner glow. 
I then again added a black stroke to the hull layer and pick whipped the stroke size to the front layer. So I didn't need to reanimate it. And if I made any changes, it would affect both layers. Now I had my text. It was time to create a scene around it to really bring it to life. It started out as two solids with the main background having a gradient ramp effect on. The second solid was made 3D so that I could rotate it and create a kind of horizon line. And to get this bend fall off, I used a CC lens effect with, you guessed it, another gradient on top. This time it was a four color gradient to create a kind of horizon light. I also added a stroke to this layer too to keep it in theme with the text. And I added an extra horizon light source with an ellipse shape in this orange color and added a really soft fast box blur to feather this out. It still felt a little empty, so I duped the floor and added this grid layer on top before experimenting with some kind of mountain range to guide the eye to the text. This ended up being a cloud-like shape in the end, which I added a subtle wave warp and a mirror to, which really helps to center the eye. I noticed the text was missing a floor shadow, so I duped my original comp, made it 3D, rotated it, and then manually keyframed its Z position to make it look like it was moving correctly. To finish off, I created a few adjustment layers for effects. First was a posterize effect, which I set to 10, which was matted to the front and back face comp to create this kind of step gradient look, which I absolutely love. I then animated a rectangle across and matted this to the text too to create a light sweep effect, as the built-in one doesn't work on layer styles. I added a turbulent displace to this for a bit more visual interest before adding a couple of stars which scaled up and faded off over the text as the light sweeps across. I did experiment with wave warps across the text, but in the end left those out as it did feel a little out of place. As I ended up going for this kind of dusk theme, I added some stars to the scene by creating a new solid and adding CC starburst before filling this with a subtle yellow tint. Finally, I added some grain, quick grammatic aberration to separate the RGB channels a little, and my go-to favorite, posterized time set to 12.5 FPS to give us and that stepped finished look. Please comment below if you learned something new and if you want to go ahead and watch more After Effects videos just like this, you can click on the screen now where I'll be breaking down another project.